When we look back at the images that defined 2018, there's plenty to choose from. But there was one so breathtaking in its audacity that it rightfully went viral. Back in March, in the Greek city of Thessaloniki, a top-table Super League clash was about to end nil-nil between the home side, Pauk, and Aik from Athens. Both teams have enjoyed scant success in recent years, as the league has been dominated by Olympiakos, owned by the highly controversial shipping magnate Evangelos Maranakis, more on him later. Over the previous 21 seasons, Olympiakos had won 19 titles. But not this year. This year, the league was between the once-dominant Ike of Athens, yet who hadn't won the league since 1994, and Pauk, who hadn't won it since 1985. Whoever won the game would be in pole position. Throw in a heated rivalry between the capital and Greece's second city, the combustible atmosphere in Pauk's feared Tumba Stadium, and a large number of ultras, and the atmosphere was guaranteed to be fiery. And indeed it was. So much so that when the referee denied Pauk an 89th minute winner, the pitch was invaded by incredulous Pauk staff, and in the middle was the owner, Ivan Savidis, wearing a gun. Not many people outside of Greece knew who Savidis was, but here he was, with a gun on his hip, trying to remonstrate with the referee. The game was abandoned and the images went around the world. The result of that match, after much legal toing and froing, was awarded to Ike, while Pauk had three points deducted. The incident effectively cost Pauk the title, which Ike Athens gleefully celebrated. But that game in March did much more than bring the title to Ike. It brought Ivan Savidis, a Russian oligarch closely aligned with Russian President Vladimir Putin, and who bought a majority share of Pauk in 2012, out of the shadows whilst highlighting the dysfunctional state of Greek football, mired by fan violence, knee-deep in accusations of corruption, and controlled by the machinations of the super-rich. Ivan Savidis is a very much self-made man. He was born into a poor Pontic Greek family in rural Georgia in 1959, when it was part of the Soviet Union. The Pontic Greeks had historically come from the southern shores of the Black Sea, today in modern northern Turkey. For centuries, the Greek Orthodox Christian population had found life difficult under the Ottoman Empire, and had endured purges and forced expulsions. The situation became most pronounced from the end of the 18th century until the end of the Greco-Turkish War, which Turkey won in 1922. By the final population exchange agreed in 1923, two million people were uprooted. The Pontic Greeks fled and found themselves in what would become the Soviet Union, where Savidis was born. In fact, both Pauk and Ike have refugee histories. Both clubs were formed by recently arrived refugees from Constantinople, now Istanbul, who built football clubs to replace the ones they'd lost. Savidis left home at 15 and moved to Rostov-on-Don, where he got a job rolling cigarettes at the state-owned tobacco company before joining the army, where he served with distinction. He later graduated from the Rostov State University of Economics in 1988. The details are hazy about what he owned at that time, but after the Soviet Union disintegrated, he returned briefly to Greece before coming back to become the general director when the tobacco factory was privatised. Donskoy Tabak became one of the biggest players in the Russian tobacco market. It was reported by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists that Donskoy gifted one billion cigarettes a year to the Russian army. From there, Savidis diversified, setting up Agricom in 2004, which provided a home for his myriad assets, including Donskoy Tabak and the biggest cooked pork meat factory in South Russia, according to one official biography. He also loved football, and was president briefly of Russian team FC Rostov, and then their smaller city rivals, SKA Rostov. At the same time, Savidis entered politics. In 2003, he entered the Duma, Russia's parliament, as a member of United Russia, the country's ruling party and long-time political home of Putin, although Putin chose to run as an independent in Russia's flawed 2018 presidential elections. He served until 2012. By then, he'd turned his attention to Greece, his ancestral homeland and especially the northern region of Macedonia. The Greek financial crisis, which followed the 2008 global recession, decimated the country's economy, and Thessaloniki was hit particularly hard, fueling the already palpable resentment in the north of the country towards Athens. But Thessaloniki is also strategically important. The port is Greece's gateway to the Balkans, so the crisis also presented an opportunity. Savidis, after aligning himself with the left-wing government of Alexis Tsipras, went on a spending spree to purchase a whole range of assets at knockdown prices. He is part of a consortium that has bought Thessaloniki port, a key strategic asset for NATO, of which Greece is a member. Russia views NATO as a military threat, and combating its spread is perhaps its biggest foreign policy goal. More on that later too. Newspapers, a TV channel, tobacco companies, vast tracts of real estate and beachfronts, not to mention hotels and other businesses, have all been purchased by Savidis. He has come to dominate Thessaloniki's economy. 
but it was the 2012 acquisition of Pauk that transformed him into a local hero. Greek football has been mired in corruption scandals, violence and allegations of government interference, and favouritism for decades. Much of that came to a head in the Greek match-fixing crisis of 2015. Dozens of officials were arrested and charged for their involvement, including Olympiakos owner Evangelos Marinakis. Pauk and its fearsome Gate 4 Ultras had always seen themselves to be on the receiving end of the vast conspiracy directed from Athens by the likes of Marinakis. Savidis was seen as the antidote, a wealthy man, an outsider, not dependent on state patronage and clean of the corruption that seemed to blight Greek football. When violence marred a cup semi-final match against Olympiakos the final year and almost led FIFA to suspend the Greek FA, Savidis withdrew Pauk from the second game. Greek football is undergoing an acute crisis. The healthy parties are fighting against the well-organised corrupt system, he later explained in a statement. Every day, we are welcoming more supporters of clean football in our ranks. Today, we need to unite our efforts and prove that the need to protect our country's sporting honour, justice and decency stands above the interests of a single club. Marinakis was cleared three years later of forming a match-fixing ring, but is still awaiting the outcome of a drug trafficking charge related to a ship that was found to have two tonnes of heroin on it. He has strenuously denied any wrongdoing. When Marinakis bought Nottingham Forest in 2017, he said that the prosecution against me is a product of a plot that has nothing to do with the truth. But, as Savidis' battles with the Greek footballing establishment was winning over fans in Thessaloniki, elsewhere, questions were being asked about the reasons for his vast investments in the region, especially key NATO assets like the port, which seemed to correlate with the Kremlin's wider geopolitical interests. A few months after the gun incident, a report from the OCCRP, a well-respected international anti-corruption organisation, claimed that Savidis had been funnelling cash into the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, which borders Greece to the north. The country had recently changed its government and pledged to join NATO and the European Union, but this had been prevented by Greece in the past over the name of the country. Greece believes that there is only one Macedonia, the northern region of its country, and that Firom is an attempt to acquire history and territory from Greece. It's a hugely emotive issue. But the new Macedonian Prime Minister, Zoran Zaev, and Greece's Alexis Tsipras agreed on a deal that would see the country renamed as the Republic of North Macedonia. A referendum was planned in Firom to OK the move. The agreement sparked violent protests in Thessaloniki, often involving power cultures. The Greek government even expelled two Russian diplomats over what they believed was attempts by Russia to stir up opposition to the agreement. Meanwhile, OCCRP claimed that Sevidis was funneling 300,000 euros in cash to nationalist groups in the Macedonian capital of Skopje, and especially to the feared committee ultras of FK Varda, a football club owned by the Russian tycoon Sergei Samsonenko, who, by chance, also comes from Rostov. The money, it was claimed, was used to help agitate protests against the name deal and help thwart Macedonia's NATO ambitions. Macedonia's Prime Minister later accused Russian businessmen of trying to agitate against the referendum. Savidis, meanwhile, denied that he had anything to do with it. We make it absolutely clear that businessman Ivan Savidis has nothing to do with the allegations of this totally false and highly slanderous report, he said in a statement. Still, on the pitch at least, things are looking better. When Pauk played Ike earlier this season, Pauk won. Savidis wasn't there. He's been banned from all football activity for three years, although that doesn't stop him turning up to the stadium where he waves at the fans and then leaves before kickoff. He does, at least, have other good news to console him. Earlier this year, he sold Donskoy Tabak, as well as his Greek tobacco holdings, for $1.6 billion to Japan Tobacco. Even Savidis officially became Russia's newest billionaire.